Today we're going to run through the Goldhorn uh, DSP in demo mode. This will be able to show some of the critical setup features without actually getting out to the car. And um, we'll load our DSP of choice and then all the default and basic settings come up. So first thing I want to demonstrate is uh, when you, you know, first hook up a DSP there's a few steps you want to take before you actually power it on and send a signal to it and expect your speakers to send uh, to play you know music. The main reason is that if you've got tweeters in the system running active, meaning there's no passive crossover involved, uh, you could easily burn a tweeter out because the defaults might launch with settings uh, that don't have any crossover settings. That's going to be a problem. So what we're going to do is build a, um, a system that's not unlike what I have in my actual vehicle. We're going to go with tweeters, mids, and woofers in the front, and then rear doors. Um, I have some package shelf speakers in the very back, uh, back deck speakers rather, and then subwoofers. So I'm just going to recreate this here in the I.O. settings, input-output settings, and then um, show you what you need to work with along the way. First thing we're going to do is work on our input source. Now, you can use analog, obviously, RCAs. You have up to eight with the DSPA 816 Pro, eight inputs of RCA. This would be useful for regular aftermarket head units that have, you know, six, I suppose they could have up to eight, but usually six RCA inputs. Um, my actual system uses optical in, digital optical, Toslink. Uh, you can use coax digital as well. You can use either or, you can't use both, important. But for the sake of our little setup here, I'm going to run an analog uh, setup in the demo mode. So let's knock these all out and we'll leave the Bluetooths in here because the uh, DSPs have built in Bluetooth. So Bluetooth left, Bluetooth right. But we'll knock these opticals out. I'm just right clicking to clear. And heads up if you're using a laptop like I am now for demonstration, it helps to have a, a mouse because moving fast through this, it's inefficient. So first thing we want to do with the RCA inputs is give them a alias name. And so this is front left, front right, front center, rear left, rear right, rear center, surround left, surround right. And I never really figured out what these are. RSL, I'm going to assume it's maybe rear surround. And then I have no earthly idea what star.l means. Just assume it's part of the surround. Uh, realistically, because the Sky Atom system uses just these six, I match up to these where applicable. So we're going to go with front left, and we'll call it a full signal. Front right, full signal. We'll call this rear left, rear right. And two subwoofer, which is you know classic six-channel RCA on most aftermarket head units. There we go. So we got our input sources all labeled up. The next thing we want to do is set them to our outputs. And the 816 Pro has, no surprise, 16 outputs, eight of which are powered internally with the, uh, I think it's 80 watts by eight. But each Goldhorn DSP has a different amount of regular RCA outputs and internal amplified outputs. So it just depends on what you invested in. Uh, we'll just put these in place as if it were, let's say, the, the left and the right for the front. And we would call those for the tweeters. And then we'll call these for the mids. And then the um, 
Woofers, actually, let's put the woofers. Yeah, let's let's leave them here. Let's do that. And then the um, see what I was debating on was if my woofers in my front are going to be powered by an amplifier, or are they going to be powered by the internal DSP amplifier? If they were powered by an amplifier separate, what you would want to do is get through the eight channels, and then on the ninth and beyond, that's where your RCAs two other amplifiers would be involved. So you would move this instead. So you'd have two here, two here, and then the begins with I. This is the uh, ninth. So you could do, say, front left, front right. And I think we'll just do that for the sake of our build here. That mimics close to what my system is. So front left, front right. And then the rears on my system, um, rear left, rear right, are also powered by the amplifier uh, that I have, a separate four channel amplifier that powers these. And we'll just stick with that. And then we'll do our subwoofer one and our subwoofer two to the other RCA outputs. We'll leave two blank. And up in here, um, we can leave this alone too, but you could also put in, uh, say, surround speakers if you had extra, you know, speakers, especially on, like, say, a uh, an SUV or something. But I think we'll keep it simple here. We have our front left, right, left, right, rears. This is a good setup. Um, now, we're going to remove the ones unused to simplify. And now we have our inputs and outputs set up as far as inputs go. Now we have to determine what our aliases are for our outputs. So same basic trick here, but now we're going to be a bit more precise with our range. So these will be their tweeters. So A and B will be our left and right tweeters. And so I'm just going to select high. Now thing comes up and asks whether you want to load the preset value. If you say confirm here, just going to switch and show you what that means. It preloads a what I would call a safe crossover of 3000 and this would be good enough to not blow a tweeter by accident. So we'll just stick with that and then I'm going to go to front right here and this time I'm going to select not to preload this so you can see the difference. See how it's just flat? And then what I could do is set my high pass where I want it. Maybe I want that at 3,500 instead. And maybe I want it at a steeper slope. So that's the difference. And of course, you can always just change this how you want. So we'll get back into this later for not, well, let's tell you what, a good habit would be to at least make sure that they are set should you accidentally power the system on and run it uh, we'll just run <laughs> gotta add an extra zero see that's why it's important to make sure your stuff's set up right and we'll just set these to link widths all right so moving right along we're just going to run through these real quick so front left front right highs and then the mids so we'll go front left mid same thing I'm just going to hit cancel here for now. And so there's our tweets and mids. And then we have our woofers in the front. So we'll go front left low, front right low. Okay, these are the rear lefts. Now, rear left or right can be full, like a, say, a component set or a coaxial speaker. We'll certainly customize them later. There we go. And then let's give this subwoofer one and two. Okay. So it's just about getting the names so you know and, you know, kind of remember. I do recommend you write all this stuff down 
and when you go do your setups, um, just take note of your, you know, which ones you've connected to. So there we go. Um, we'll wrap this video up with just this piece. This is input output basic setup, kind of skipping the Sky Atom stuff for now. We'll get into that later. I had a separate video on it, but um, I'll go through it a lot, lot more slow and in detail. Just for now, this is the basic setup just to get you rolling. And remember, can't stress this enough, if you're concerned about, say, turning on the system and you want to just make sure the speakers work, make sure your tweeters are protected with a high-pass crossover before you turn the system on. It might be surprisingly loud and you might surprisingly, unsurprisingly, blow a tweeter. All right, good enough for now. Thanks for watching.